Streaming data allows me to see data as it's happening right now. In this example, I see a race car as it's going around a track. I can see trends like the acceleration over time. I can see its current temperature for each tire and each brake. I can also see on these bullet charts the individual tire and temperature changes, as well as the overall tire and temperature changes. On the bottom, I see a roll angle showing the car's tilt, and on the right, I have a bar chart showing the fuel level. Now, each of these charts wouldn't have as much meaning if it was just at rest data. With that rest data, I would have to either aggregate all of the roll angles together into a sum or an average, and that would just probably equal out to zero, not really giving me any value. To show the car on a track, showing this at rest would just show the car's path, and it wouldn't really show how the car is doing right now compared to historical trends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to show you how to create these type of streaming visualizations. In Spotfire, the first thing you want to do is add the streaming data to your analysis. You do this by going to the connections, and you can scroll down to Tipco Spotfire Data Streams, and you can create a new connection. Here you'll put in the URL of your streaming data source, just like you would with any other database. Below that, you can add your individual credentials if needed. After hitting connect, Spotfire will connect to the streaming data source and show all the streaming data sets available. Here I see my card data set, and by adding it, I'll see each of the individual fields available in this data set. This is what I want to bring in, so I'll hit OK. Now just like any other database source, I can choose if I want to import this into memory or leave it external for in-database analysis. This is covered in the fundamentals video on data access, so if you have more questions, make sure to check that out for more detail. I'm going to leave this external since I want new data to always be reflected in my dashboard. Importing this in memory will just give me a snapshot. Now I can go and I can create a table visualization so you can easily see the data coming into my analysis. Table visualizations are difficult for humans to interpret and your Spotfire administrator may limit the number of viewable streaming rows. This is shown here for 100 rows. Much more streaming data is available in the analysis, however, which I can filter to here or holistically show in other chart types. I'll create from scratch a new visualization. This is done just like any other visualization in Spotfire, with the exception that the AI recommendation engines won't work with streaming data. I'll just create a basic chart, such as a line chart. This is showing the race time in the y-axis and the event time, which is the time that the data occurred, and that's being shown in the x-axis. The race time isn't very insightful, so I'll change this to show speed. And I want to show this as an average. Now I can see the speed trend over time. Right here from my x-axis, I can change the window of view in my visualization. I'll change this to 30 seconds. Now I get a closer view as how the speed's changing over time. I can also change the number of columns in my analysis just like any other Spotfire visualization. Here I'll remove speed and I'll add the, each of the individual temperatures for the tires. I'll choose this as an average, and I'll color by each individual tire. Here I see a trend of each individual tire temperature over time. I can go into data and add calculated column if I want to see an average of these. Now the first thing I'll point out is the functions available in calculated columns and other expressions are going to be a little bit different. These are going to be live data mark functions, and you can find information on each of these in the live data mark documentation. Here for an average, I'm just going to grab each of the tire temperatures, and I'm going to add them together and divide them by four in order to get an overall temperature across all tires. I'll name this overall tire temp. Now I have a calculated column in my analysis, which I can add just like any other column. By changing this to black, you can clearly see, for a reference line, the overall tire temperature across all tires. I can also add at rest data. Here I'm going to add, from my local drive, a shape file for the race car track. After adding it, I'll choose to create a map chart. 
and I can see my track outlined. By going into layers, I can choose to add my streaming data set as the car data layer. I don't want a coordinate reference system on here. And for positioning, I want to choose the X and Y values for my data set. I'll choose X position here, and I'll choose Y position here. Now I see where my car is on the track. However, this is overlaid with all the historical data from the streaming data set. This isn't very useful because these overlays obstruct my view of where the car is now. So what I'll do is I'll go into my streaming data layer and I'll change the data limiting down to the past five seconds. Now I can see where the car is in just the past five seconds of data. I'll do some further refinement by turning off the sizing here and I'll change the colors to be based off of the latest time. Again, the event time is the time in my data set when the data occurred. Here on my color scales, I can do a custom expression and I'm going to choose max of the axis color, which is the event time. So this is indicating the latest event time and I'm going to subtract five seconds. And I'll hit OK. And now my streaming data set is colored by the last five seconds of data with lighter colors being the older data and the darker colors being the newer data. You can add as many charts as you can fit onto a page. They don't all have to be streaming data. You can also add at rest data and it can all be related with your streaming data for brush linking across all charts. By selecting data, even in streaming data, you can see drill cross and drill down capabilities. By selecting the current gear over time, I'm seeing it across the speed chart, the position on the map, the tire temperature, as well as the road count of the gears that were used at that time. Note that each brush linking will send a query to your streaming data source. Each chart also sends an individual query. Only the visualizations and marking on your active page send queries to your data source. If you find that your data source is struggling, make sure to scale up your hardware to accommodate your visualizations as needed. Also note that when adding streaming data, if I chose to import it into the Spotfire in-memory engine, then I would be able to use all of the Spotfire functions available for in-memory calculations. Note that, however, this will be on at-rest data. This data, however, is also open to data functions used with Tear. If you'd like to use data functions on the streaming data itself, this must be done in the Spotfire Data Streams product on the streaming data source before it comes into Spotfire. This is available to you with the Spotfire Data Streams license, but the topics are outside the scope of this video.